Okay, now let's talk about planets and finding good planets. Um, you can use this technique to work out basically what type of planets the system's going to have in advance, and once you've scanned it, what type of planet you're looking at before you've scanned it. So I'm going to go through two different aspects. The first one, again, is, using, is working out what type of uh, planets a system is likely to have in advance of actually being there. You can use this method to maximize your income or to maximize your science, um, depending on what type of explorer you are. So let's pay attention. The main thing you need to know about what type of uh, planets a star is going to have is how young that star is. So you can't actually never, you can you never know how young a star is going to be, but you can take a good guess. The first two are never going to be very old. So because they don't last very long, as well as protostars, obviously they're going to be very young. Um, and wolf riot stars, generally going to be speaking, going to be quite young. So the type of planets you're going to get in these are usually going to be young planets. Young planets are going to be the tinder types, the ones that are black and molten. Um, and you're going to get you know, all, all other kinds of stars, but very rarely you're going to find life there because life takes a long time to develop. Um, you're much more likely to find life in these categories, not just because they can be old, but also because they are warm enough to sustain life. Any type of star, according to the Stellar Forage engine, even L's and T's and Y's can sustain life, as I've noticed in my travels, although you get exceedingly rarer once you get down to M. K, G and F are very likely going to have life. Um, that's my dog barking, I apologise. Shush! Um, there you go. Yeah, I did bring my dog into space because I get very bored. So, um, the younger stars, uh, uh, sorry, the cooler stars are generally speaking going to have a lot of ice worlds which are not going to be worth very much. Um, what you really want to be doing is looking for the F, G's and K's, the A's, and these two types of stars will have a lot of high metal content ones. Um, so that is how you can predict in advance what type of planets are going to be found at various systems. If you're the type of explorer that loves trying to find the really unusual planets um, around unexpected stars, then go for protostars because every now and then you run into a protostar that has life and it's only three million years old and you're like, what? How did that happen? And then you make up a whole story in your mind about how it was seeded by aliens on comets and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Carbon stars, generally speaking, very old, very cool. Um, so unlikely to find life, but I have found life around them as well as around neutron stars and black holes. Don't even ask how that works, because I have no idea. The radiation and the sheer lack of heat are just not going to work. Um, but it could be they captured them recently and the life is still going. I don't know. I really don't know. White dwarfs as well. Occasionally you'll find life there. Doesn't make sense. Stop it! Around the larger stars, but not too young and too hot to basically blast everything away but you will find them around O's but generally around B's and A's you're going to find a lot of mass a lot of rings a lot of gas giants a lot of stars a lot of planets I mean um, a lot of heavy planets and you can find some bizarre stuff there so the interesting you can find something interesting anywhere but if you're looking for something in particular bear those tips in mind when you're planning on which star to jump to in a particular group in the area that you're scanning at the time um, I have, I've left a lot of things out because there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to discuss and it's not an exact science because the Stellar 4 engine produces a lot of anomalies but generally speaking, follow that advice and you should be able to find what you're looking for. Okay, so you've now come into a system, you've honked your ADS and you have a system map but everything is unexplored, so what to do, what to do. You can either go up to every single one of these planets to try and work out what it is just by scanning it with a detailed surface scanner but there is another method, you can try and work out what the planet is simply from the noise that it makes. Now, Commander Akira Masakari has created a thread where he's um, given out his research on the planet sounds and the amount of uh, useful information there is tremendous. With basically one exception, you can work out any single type of planet just by the sound. You can work out whether it's uh, high metal content, the whether it's got life, whether it tell the difference between water worlds and earth-like worlds, sometimes they're hard to tell the difference. Um, if you can simply learn the tunes, and if you're an advanced explorer, you will bother to learn them. So let's see if we can apply that method now. Let's pick, say, this one. Now first you hear a few jingles, and then the tune itself will begin. Can you hear that? Not really a tune, but it is a series of synthesized noises. 
Okay, so unfortunately we seem to have picked the one exception, um, which is good because I can teach you about the exception to this method. Basically, metal rich worlds and one particular type of high metal content world, generally speaking with no atmosphere, um, will have an identical tune. So right now it's either going to be a metal rich or a high metal content. There are three other tunes for the different for different types of high metal contents depending on the pressure of the atmospheres and you can distinguish them from metal rich but in this case it's going to be one of the two which doesn't really matter because quite quite um, they're both quite valuable especially if it's a terraforming candidate. You can't tell the difference between terraforming candidates. So let's go and uh, check and see if we can confirm that. Okay, so let's take a look. High metal content, okay. Well, I've already scanned this one, it's a metal rich, and you'll notice that it's a very similar tune, so let's listen. Yep, and now this one. Exactly the same, so unfortunately you can't distinguish between those, but now let's listen to like a rocky, it's either gonna be an icy or a rocky or a ro rocky icy. Similar, but not the same. Let's try this one. That's actually the same, so they're probably both rocky. Here's definitely an ice well, so let's hear what they sound like. Okay, you get the gist of it, so I recommend you study up on the thread here. This is the thread, and you go through all of them and start to memorize them and start putting it into practice. You got, he's basically given links to every type of planet, so you've got the icy worlds, rocky ice, rocky worlds, exotic gas giants with life, water giants, helium rich, they're all different, all very easy to distinguish. Um, you've got irregular gas giants. Um, and you've got some guides here as well, and I highly recommend you go and click those guides. Now you do have another tool at your, your disposal. You see the hologram there. That hologram has a certain pattern to it. You can't rely on it too much because there is a lot of overlap. For example, Earth-like worlds and high metal content worlds can sometimes both have that, as you've just seen, because that was a high metal content. But it's the same as like for an Earth-like world and ammonia world. But you can, for example, use it to rule out icy worlds and sometimes rocky worlds, but not necessarily to distinguish between the two. Um, and you can use it to determine the different types of gas giant. I'll show you a picture and then I'll give you a link in the description about where to find that picture, basically illustrating the differences between the, t the different holograms. Okay, this is the chart I refer to, um, created by Commander Dognosh, that gives you all of the holograms and what they could be. Fortunately, there is some overlap, so it's not a perfect tool, but it will definitely help you cut out some of the chaff away from the wheat, um, because you'll be able to use it to identify, for example, you'll know for sure that that always refers to a class 5 gas giant, if that's what you're looking for, etc. So if you can memorize this, you can definitely refine your technique. In case you missed part one of the advanced exploration series, click on screen to see advanced jumping techniques, including the swoop and scoop method and how to get more out of your route plotter. In part two, we spoke about some advanced navigation techniques, including looking at stellar classification, as well as decoding the UC naming conventions. In the final video, we will look at key bindings, as well as discuss some philosophy about exploration. So, so long space cowboys, and stay tuned.